channel and today I'm going to talk about um, spiritual narcissists and um, narcissist is kind of a word that is spreading around at the moment and I believe there is a very good reason for that and it's um, narcissism has kind of become a thing that is very common in our time and um, if you haven't heard about it, then educate yourself about it, uh, otherwise you will probably uh, end up uh, encountering one of these uh, people. Um, and that's not a very mm, pleasant experience. Uh, so what do I mean by spiritual narcissists? Well, um, narcissists, they are attracted to empaths, to um, vulnerable people, to people that are searching for something outside of themselves um, and people who they can feel superior to and who they can control in different ways and uh, manipulate emotionally and so on. And so that's why a narcissist um, thrives in a spiritual community because there are a lot of people who are going through a deep uh, spiritual emotional journey and um, so some of these people become easy targets um, and one thing that is also very common is that when you start to awaken then your heart becomes really open and uh, you um, experience very blissful states where you um, it's almost like you love everybody in your environment and you um, um, you can um, meet very troubled people but you still want to send them your love to um, heal them almost and I don't think there's anything wrong with that however in in the beginning of the journey that can be uh, a little bit imbalanced and we need to find a way to live from our, our hearts and be truthful be vulnerable but still um, not be sus be um, a target for these uh, darker energies. Uh, we need to be aware of um, the darkness still exists and uh, it can come in forms and shapes and uh, that we didn't expect. And that's what's so dangerous about these spiritual narcissists that if they are in a context where we are supposed to feel safe, supposed to feel that we can open up and be vulnerable, then that's when they do the most harm. So um, that's why I'm going to share with you um, five signs to, um, uh, or five red flags that you can look out for so that you. Um, can shield yourself towards uh, these types of people. Um, number one is confusion. Uh, when you meet like a spiritual teacher, a healer or um, meditation group leader or whatever, um, you're not supposed to feel confused afterwards. That's not, they're not gonna mess with your head. Uh, you might feel that, yeah, you got new ideas or you got um, something opened up within you or whatever, but if there is confusion and you can't really let it go and you, you're wondering like, why do I feel this way? Maybe something's wrong with me. Uh, maybe this teacher has something that I need to learn from them to kind of get rid of this weird feeling that I'm having then. That's a huge red flag for me. Uh, number two is that um, vulnerability. 
are this is this person showing real vulnerability in where they're at in their current journey in their emotions in um yeah i mean it's it's common for these spiritual narcissists to have this sob story and usually something from childhood or something that happened that was really uh, horrifying or whatever but it doesn't always mean that they take accountability for that and sometimes uh, people use these stories as a means for people to feel sorry for them and that nothing is their fault and they're just um, uh, allowed to treat people however they like just because this happened to them uh, so look for true vulnerability and true um, humility because the narcissists don't have that and the number three is also connected to this and it's uh, how look at how they react to criticism if it's someone that you are um, seeing regularly in some way then usually with everyone we meet there will be some kind of friction or some kind of uh, some things we need to discuss so that's just normal human behavior and um, look closely to how they react if you question them about anything uh, like do they lash out do they make you feel uh, inferior to them do they make you feel like you have a long way to go before you will reach that enlightenment um, then that's a red flag too and number four on this list is um, I need to be special and put on a pedestal spiritual narcissists they love to show off their abilities and they love to talk about their abilities and how special they were and how early in childhood they discovered these gifts and how many people they have helped and how much better everyone's feeling when they've seen them and um so i mean look for actions rather than words actions always speak louder than words and if these two doesn't match up then that's a huge red flag i also think that a true healer a true spiritual uh, guide or whatever you like to call it like um they will know that everyone has abilities it's just about have they activated them yet or not um they will also know that everyone is special um because we all have inside deep um, unique gifts and uh, abilities whether we recognize them or not so I mean, we we'll live in the times of awakening, so it's not about anybody being special, anybody being a guru sitting on a pedestal anymore. It's not about that. A true healer will will only they will assist you on your journey. They will not uh, make you follow their every teaching. And number five, um, are they ob obsessed with their outer reality and uh, how they are perceived? Perfectionism is usually a thing that comes with narcissism. Um, so um, watch out for those who seem very shiny on the outside and like they have, the, have everything figured out. I mean, that's something I really struggle with on my journey because I feel that it will be so nice sometimes if somebody that would be perfect would just come and save me from all this inner work, from all these hard times, from all these doubts and thoughts and feelings and, you know, and I think that's just a human um, basic... Uh, 
need or not need but we want to escape our own uh, accountability sometimes we want that savior to come in and but it doesn't really work like that I mean of course sometimes when we get into trouble then the right people can show up at the right at the right time but um, that's again about assisting the way I look look at it it's like and uh, they assist you to keep on further on your journey it's not about um, anybody saving anyone else in that sense so with that said i feel like sometimes it's hard when you have been affected by narcissists because they also make you feel like you're the narcissist you're the <laughs> troubled person you're the one that has got everything wrong and uh, so it's hard sometimes to um for example uh be, be here on YouTube and share things like does, does that make me a narcissist? I mean we all have narcissistic traits and that's also one thing that is important that um, it's not always that easy that somebody's a full-blown narcissist or they're not. Sometimes people have narcissistic traits and um, and again narcissists are us usually deeply wounded people so some people say that narcissists will never change i don't really agree to that but i agree that you can't change them unless they're willing to change and that's i also think that's why narcissists are attracted to the spiritual community because um a part of their soul really wants to heal um so they kind of get into this um, spiritual journey and then what the spiritual teachings does to people is that it um, removes layers of the ego, right? And that's the last thing a narcissist wants to do. So uh, a true narcissist will always struggle to uh, get down to the core of their being uh, because they have so high walls around them of protection and I'm hoping for the world and for yeah these people that they will find peace they will find their inner core and sometimes I think it's about pride as well like, uh, if the narcissist has been one way their entire life and people know them this way, then who are they when they let their guards down? When they stop manipulating people, when they stop using control uh, and so on. And who are they when they are vulnerable? Um, so we need to realize that spirituality is not only unicorns and rainbows. <laughs> How I mean, I would love for it to, to be like that, but it's not. I mean, you have darker sides in yourself. For example, you might have some narcissistic, narcissistic traits yourself. And um, so we need to be able to see that darkness in others and in ourselves. Because before we do that, then we, we, can't, we can't integrate this experience fully and we will not be grounded. So that was what I wanted to talk about today. So if you like this video then please give me a thumbs up or give me a follow or, or something and uh, I, will, we will, I will see you again soon. So, ciao!